Did you get one of this? This is the new Atmega Zero ESP32 S2, and this is the new board that got funded through the Group Kets campaign as part of the Hackstay IO launch. I'm gonna teach you all about this, and you don't wanna miss that. Let's get started. Hey everyone, this is Eddie from Full Hacker. So this is going to be the first of a series of videos that is going to focus on different features of the new Atmega Zero ESP32 S2. These videos are going to help you get familiarized with the new board but also to get you up to speed and help you to get up and running as soon as possible. So let's get started and I hope you like it. So I want to start this video by talking about this new board, the ESP32-S2 and the previous version, the Atmega32U4. The first thing you will notice is the color of the board. We went with black this time to match the color of our other products for the Atmega Zero. We also updated the mounting holes in this new version from the previous version, which makes the board look a lot nicer and matches the design of our older shields. Another feature that stands out is the two USB ports on this new board versus the single USB port on the previous version. We'll talk about the difference of these two USB ports in another video of this series. The next obvious things we can see between these two boards is the microcontroller. This new version uses the ESP32-S2 chip by Expressive versus the previous version which was based on the Atmega32U4 from Microchip. If you pay close attention to the GPIO pins, you will notice that we updated the design to make it easier to identify the power, ground, and GPIO pins. The square pins represents the ground, the diamonds represents the 3.3 volt pins, and the hexagon represents the two 5 volt pins. Lastly, the round pins represents the input and output GPIO pins. Next to the ESP32-S2 chip, you will find the new PS RAM and the flash memory chip. This board is packed with 32 MB of flash memory and 8 MB of PS RAM. The bad news is that this board can only use 16 megabyte out of the 32 megabyte that is embedded in this board. In a future firmware update, we are hoping to leverage the full 32 megabyte flash memory that comes in this board. This board comes with Wi-Fi integrated, which is why we have included a 3D antenna on the edge of this board. The other chip on this board is a Silicon Lab CP2102 USB to Ward bridge controller. This chip allows the Atmega Zero to communicate with the computer over serial via the USB port. A very important update that we made to this board was to change it from 5 volt to 3.3 volt to match the Raspberry Pi. Now that this board runs at 3.3 volt logic, it allows you to stack it together with the Raspberry Pi without the worry of burning the Raspberry Pi as with the previous version, which ran at 5 volts. Lastly, this new board comes with two push buttons, one for reset and the other one to put the board into boot mode. You will need to get familiarized with these two buttons as you will need it in order to update CircuitPython or to compile Arduino code into this board. I think that covers all the features in this new board, the Atmega Zero ESP32-S2. In the next video, I'm going to dive deeper and show you step by step how to get started with the new Atmega Zero ESP32-S2. In the meantime, leave me a comment and let me know what topics you want me to cover in a future video from this series. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe and to also hit the notification bell so you can get notified when I release the next video of this series. Alright, thank you for watching and I see you in the next video.